good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm John Gray. If you only knew what we talk about before you show up. I wish I could tell him. <laughs> I really do. I'm Peggy Burton. Good morning. It, it was mainly John. I'm was Jim Fuller. No, uh-uh. It was mainly John. Yeah, no. away from him. <laughs> this, this, this conversation started out pretty low, and then right. it got a little bit lower. It got lower and lower yeah, and lower. Yeah, but John really nailed it right there at the end. Now, right don't blame it on me. Air, don't, you, know. you can't blame it you know. on me. Yeah, Peggy actually started it, I think. But yeah. I think so, yeah. But anyway. That seems impossible. Happy fall, folks. Happy fall. It's, it's it here. feels like fall. Yeah, it does. It's kind of nice, isn't it? Yeah, it's yes. wonderful. Just but uh, but you go to bed one day and it's like 89 degrees and you get up and you're in your fall clothes. That's it's right. Weird. The floor's cold. The floor's cold. The gas is kicking in. The gas, the gas is, kicking, is in. kicking in. It's just. Uh, but you know the leaves aren't as pretty as I want them to be. Why is that? Shouldn't they be it's red because, and gold? It's because the older we get, the more our senses, the less we senses see. <laughs> our senses get get, get yeah, dulled. But, so. I'm waiting for the leaves to get They ready. hadn't started changing yet. Well, they're all over my yard. Yeah, that's the ones that just fall off early. Those are never pretty anyway. Yeah. There's only certain trees that really get you pretty. You just decide what's right and tell it. Well, of course. <laughs> you think I'm going to go I'm bringing that in. It's not true. I'm an <laughs> idiot anyway, so no. what difference does it make? John, John spent a, a few years in the bar atmosphere where you can say anything. Where you just say and anything, they, yeah, and nobody the, pays attention. You know. You can, if you're singing, you can redo your words. Well, there was, you know, when, when uh, Steve Graham's <laughs> out here in the audience with us today, he's going to bring us an, he's an incredible artist. And uh, back back years ago, when we all first got married, I lived the first place I lived. We lived on Central Avenue, which is the first place we all lived. But then I moved over in a little house that Sam Crim owned behind the Episcopal Church. Mm -hmm. It's a parking lot now. And there were three maple trees across the street, and they were all three different colors. One oh, was orange, pretty. one was gold, mm -hmm. and uh, an orange, orange, red, and yellow. Mm -hmm. And when they turned, it was just... I just love. Excuse me. I just love to get up in the morning, walk outside, and look right. at them. There's a lot of pretty trees. Oh, in this gorgeous! Town. And really the ginkgo are. tree up here in front of the Lutheran Church oh my gosh. is probably the prettiest tree in Tallahassee. Mm -hmm. It is fabulous. It's absolutely gorgeous when it turns. So, and that's all that's happening. Kids yeah. are back in school. Kids are back. Have that was kind of a shock to me. Oh, yeah, they've they been they've been out for been two weeks. Holiday, right? Yeah, right. I don't Some know why I thought stranded. it was next week. Some got stranded around Florida, I guess. You know, a lot of people were in Florida, Panama My City. My daughter was in Florida. And was she the, okay? For the second year in a row. Well, she, uh, they, they had to cut their trip about three days short. Yeah. I could imagine. Back home, but, uh, was <clears throat> which happened last year. It was very sad. I think it was two days last year. I hate, really hated it. I'd been there for five, and I had yeah. supposed to stay for seven, and I had to come home after five. And John knows that five days about gets me. Fuller, away. Fuller, uh, they can't keep him down there more than <laughs> five. is good. It used uh, to only be three. three. Yeah, it used to be three. Fuller yeah. never drove, never rode down there with him. He always drove his own car. <laughs> just take his own escape, car so he can get out. There's only so much family a body can stand. <laughs> well, no, it's not that. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, I get tired of the beach after a while. Get tired yeah. of the beach. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, when, when uh, and Steve and I were graduated <laughs> together, a friend of ours, Brooke Thornton, uh, who went to school with us and uh, passed away early in his life, but his father owned a, was was stationed in Tyndall Air Force Base right outside of Panama City, mm -hmm. yeah. and owned a little house in uh, Mexico Beach, and that's where Fran and I went on our honeymoon. And Mexico Beach is gone. Yes, totally, it, totally yeah. wiped out. It's gone. It's I mean, they, there is no, there is nothing left. Really tragic. And Apalachicola, which is right around in the corner down there, uh, the North Florida Seafood Festival, and they all kinds of neat things. It was it was obliterated as well. Had you told me this story a week ago, I might not have, or two weeks ago, I wouldn't have known where any of that stuff was, other than Panama yeah. City. But you know, that's yeah. right where my daughter was. Is in. Um, well, Mexico Beach was Port a cool Saint, Port St. Port Saint Joe, yeah. yeah, yeah. And Pe Mexico Beach is right in the middle between Port St. Joe and Panama City. Mm -hmm. And the thing that was cool about it is right next to Mexico Beach was paper mill property. And so there was nothing but trees and beach. Yeah. And then right next to the paper mill property was Tyndall Air Force Base. So there was about 20 miles right there of undisturbed natural beach, right? And it, which was really, really cool because you could just 
take off and and not you know there wasn't anything built up and it was just you'd see little bugs little crabs crawling and monarch butterflies had come through there in the fall and it was just an incredibly wonderful mm -hmm. place which is gone yeah I, I think I heard this morning where it might take two months to restore the power yeah you know, you know that's unreal it's a long yeah, time. Mess. Yeah. Big mess. Yeah, We're absolutely. Still wars on, on Peggy, bear with us just a moment, though. But uh, you can talk football for just a moment. You want me to doze off? <laughs> John, we'll wake uh, you up when we're finished. Uh, yeah, Peggy, how about that? Okay, go ahead. <laughs> University of Tennessee. Who would have figured they could beat Auburn on Saturday? You, Jim walked through Saturday morning, and I looked at him and I said, "Well, I reckon how bad we're going to get beat today." And we just laughed and shook our heads <laughs> and went on about our business. And uh, yeah, I know. And, and this yeah. is not anything derogatory toward the University of Tennessee. They're rebuilding this year. Sure. No, we just didn't expect. You didn't expect them that, to, that, yeah. that they'd have a shot against uh, Auburn and some other teams. But uh, you know, incredible. I kept watching. Quarterback. Look, we got a quarterback. We, we, yes, we do. That's fabulous. I kept watching that and thinking, well, this is this is really. I was really proud of them because this is going to be respectable. When it's over, because they're playing, they're yeah. pretty competitive today, and and uh, and I thought they had improved immensely in the last two weeks, actually, you know, and so. Uh, and and something else, Alante Taylor from yeah. Manchester, Tennessee, a freshman, playing linebacker, he's a monster. Right. And somebody had said, well, why didn't he play like that in Manchester? And I said, well, he didn't have anybody to play with over there. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, was, he was all alone. <laughs> well, yeah, and you would know this because you watch Tullahoma a little bit closer, Tullahoma High School a little bit closer than I do. But uh, last year, uh, Manchester lost that game, but by, only by a couple of points, am right. I correct? Right. And when they had Alante Taylor, this year, uh, Tullahoma pretty much dominated the game yeah. when yeah, they did absolutely. not have Alante yeah. Taylor. Yeah, he's but, an but incredible that young athlete. Man, yeah, yeah, and he seems to always be around he's the a, football. You know, there's kids like that, and I, it always used to amaze me when my son Jacob was young and we would go to soccer. You know, because like, little kids are in everything. They're playing t-ball, they're playing yeah. soccer, they're playing, they used, they used to be church league basketball. And, <clears throat> and when you're watching that happen, there's always one or two <coughs> little kids that just stand out. They well, no, it, it's when they're all in a wad. There's one little kid that always knows. It's always standing where the ball comes to. Yeah, I mean, it's just a sixth sense or something. They always around the ball. They know where the ball's going to be. I don't know whether it's their mind is analytical and they're looking at the pile and saying, "There's the only hole it can squirt out of." Yeah. But they understand. They got floor sense or field sense, and Alante's one of those kids. Yeah, he knows where to be. You just he just automatically knows where to be and how to get right. there. Yeah, and that's it's, something you can't teach. It's yeah. just it's just bred or born in it. It's an inside thing that you got or you don't got. God right. Given talent. God given talent. Yeah, and he scored a touchdown Saturday. Uh, yeah. And uh, so on good defense, for them. Good defense, for the balls. Yeah, absolutely. Fabulous, yeah. Absolutely. And you see, you're exactly now they right. have to play Alabama this week. Who's, yeah. who's, who's playing like a pro team? Did I read somewhere where their average margin is 38 and a half points? Victory? Yeah, yeah. Uh, margin of victory is 38 and a half points. Most people score 38 and a half points. Through six they games. They beat everybody by 38 and a half points. That's unreal. That's pretty hard yeah. to yeah. Unreal. go up against, isn't it? Hey, Tullahoma High School, speaking about ball place, Giles County, this Friday night at Tullahoma <laughs> uh, Stadium, uh, Wilkins Stadium, and uh, it'll be the last home game. Mm -hmm. And Tullahoma High School is seven and one, and uh, this is not a region game. Of course, we would like to win it, but if we lose it, it doesn't have any bearing on the region. We will go to Maplewood the next week and play for the region championship. Right? Who would have thought that? Because Maplewood and Tullahoma are the only ones that are undefeated, undefeated in, in the region. So, right. Well, and they should Oklahoma probably. I'd say they've got a good chance of beating Giles County. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, Maplewood might be another story, and that'll be a tough game. Yeah. Well, well you never know about Giles yeah. County because who's the kid that was the starting quarterback for Ole Miss years ago, yeah, several years ago? Yes, I can't remember. His brother, he came up and he's coaching at Giles County, and his brother came with him. Yeah. And is playing quarterback for Giles County. So. Yeah. 
you know, so they've got that's a little bit unfair advantage, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, it used to be it's sort of like it, it, I always used to think Shelbyville girls basketball. Yeah, they won twelve state championships, were nationally ranked. For some reason, I just don't think all those girls were born and raised in Shelbyville. Ah. <laughs> it just doesn't seem possible. To are you me. are, are you uh, suggesting that there might have been some recruitment going on? I'm suggesting that there was a job opened up somewhere over there for a girl that lived in Texas that just happened to be uh, six foot four uh, and okay. had a good jump shot. Her daddy found a place to work in Shelbyville County. <laughs> Well, I think the only That's requirement is you have to live there, right? That's it. So, I mean, there's nothing illegal Doesn't about that. Doesn't make a difference how you get there. You just have to live there. Uh, you, still, you still got to say uh, Rick Enzel was one heck of a basketball coach. Oh, yeah, yeah. Enzel was good. Without, yeah. Enzel was good. Hey, I want to remind all you folks out there, if you don't know what you might not know, second edition of my book of Low Coup. You can get that now at Couches, or you can go on my, email me, Couches Downtown Telehoma, email me at John Gray at pheadtv.com. It's a low coup, a rear title collection of short, unrelated ideas that, when joined together, create an image which hopefully sparks the joys of imagination. I wrote that stuff because I went to a meeting with a woman who was published in Haiku, and I didn't know what haiku was, and she so told you, me it's mm -hmm. Japanese writing, right. and there's no title, and it's three syllables, five syllables, three syllables of unrelated stuff, and I thought that's too many rules, so I went home that night and started and writing you. low. So you invented this low. I invented this, yeah. yeah. Invented it. And here's a couple right here just to show you that they go from the sublime to the ridiculous. If the train you're on slows down due to curves, hills, lost track, or bad switches, whether you're driving or riding in the caboose, never lose your steam. Never lose your enthusiasm. That's nice. Enthusiasm. Yeah. Norman Vincent Peale. I read right. a little book about enthusiasm one time. It's incredible. My tidy whities have disappeared. Found them in the sock drawer, quaking in fear. <laughs> Thieves from Washington were in town hunting toboggans for their cold political bosses, the buttheads. Goodness. <laughs> John, where do you get it? Where well, does it come tidy, from? Tidy whities and buttheads. You know, I mean, where, what else could be considered a toboggan for a butthead other than a pair of underwear? Uh, you're, you're just a mess. So what, you'll find all that you'll in find all that, all that beautiful information right here in the second edition of Loku to be found at Couches Downtown Tullahoma or you can email me at John Gray at pheadtv.com after this thankless self-promotion we will be back after this commercial <laughs> oh, break. <thank> you. <laughs> <laughs> It's football time in Tennessee, and nobody tackles the competition like the Russell Barnett Automotive family with six locations to serve you, certified collision center, over 1,000 new and pre-owned vehicles to choose from at russellbarnett.com, hometown auto rental, limited lifetime powertrain warranty on certain units, certified pre-owned units. Too many reasons to mention why. Keep asking the question, why buy anywhere else? Ah, the glory days. Running to daylight on the gridiron and chasing a ball with a mind of its own. Cheering the team to victory and marching to the beat of your own drum. Memories that last a lifetime. But sometimes we're reminded of our glory days in ways we'd rather forget. Get back in the game. The rehab team at Life Care Center of Tullahoma is ready to help you live and play well. Get your news first, fast, and free with your news leader on 6 every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday nights at 6, 8, and 10 p.m. Local weather, sports, community calendar events, and a comprehensive look at the latest news stories and news makers as only a video news broadcast can do. Get it first, fast, and free with news leader on Channel 6, your local information network. Welcome back. <laughs> I am just 
on this set with two former vocal students from doing a show in Manchester, and I'm so excited to have them here today. Amanda Wright, Caitlin Burnett Rogers, and a mom. Yes. <laughs> it looks good on you. Thank you. And you two are both starring in Singing in the Rain. Yes. And I was about to say, go ahead and do this little number. You want to do it now? Can you okay. do it now? Yes, of course. Doesn't matter how long it is. I mean, you can't say no when uh, Peggy Burton is your <laughs> both yes, of our that's former exactly music right. teachers. <laughs> uh, I'm singing in the rain, just singing in the rain. What a glorious feeling. I'm happy again. I'm laughing at clouds so dark up above. The sun's in my heart and I'm ready. Because we want to talk about the show and we want to talk about how to get tickets and all that. So when do you open? Important information. Uh, it's really easy to remember. It's the very last weekend in October and the very first weekend in November. November. So the 26th, 27th, and 28th of October and the 2nd, 3rd, and 4th of November. Yes. And this are, these are 7 o'clock performances except for Sunday. 7.30 performances oh, 7 okay. and 2 o'clock on Sundays. 2 o'clock on yes. Sunday. And what, who are you in the play? Well, I'm lucky enough to be Kathy Selden. Uh, so she plays opposite of Don, the leading man. And um, you love she's that, actually. Don't you? Of course I do. <laughs> of course I do. Although I've been telling people I'm so waiting for the day when we decide to uh, jazz it up in Manchester and just do an entire uh, gender swap. And then oh, we can man. play Don that and would Cosmo. Be the best. There you go. Right? And they can play <laughs> Kathy and Lena. There you go. Uh, how and about you? I play Lena Lamont, who is kind of the antagonist of the show. Um, and she would like to be, I think, where Kathy is. And she's the movie star, but she really doesn't have a lot of talent or um, the vocal ability or the dance ability. And um, she also gets the guy. So, so she is yeah. trying to worm her way in and yes. having a hard time. Yes. What fun. I, I know, when was this first written? Do you know? Oh, yeah, the, goodness. Uh, well, I know, I know that the, I believe we looked it up, and I believe the movie came out um, quite some time ago. Yeah, it's a, a long time ago yes. when I saw it. But um, it has not been revamped um, in any way, shape, mm -hmm. form, or fashion. The it's only thing that's different, same. I mean, people who have seen and love seeing it in the rain um, on the big screen, um, you're still looking for that big number where Don is singing in the rain. Yes. And dancing. And dancing in the rain, singing <laughs> and, you have and Don dancing. Don that can do that? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, really. Um, Gene Kelly, why didn't you? Uh, I yes. mean, well, we you don't have Gene Kelly. I know that. <laughs> um, sorry, Jared. <laughs> we actually have a very nice gentleman. His name is Jared Fibblecorn, um, and he is one of the dance students over at Duck River Dance. Miss Danelle Offlerball has been and she's wonderful doing enough. Job. Yes, oh, she's man. been choreographing she really shows yeah. at Millennium Repertory Company, um, right on the square, and she's been doing a fabulous job. So, and if you want to get tickets, uh, the Mac, you go to MillenniumRep.org. If you guys are listening back there, put this on the screen. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. uh, MillenniumRep.org, and you can get tickets. It's $13 for students, seniors, and military, and $15 for the rest of us. <laughs> and um, for a special today, Joel uh, Longstreth, who is the managing director, set up a special code for you guys. Oh, nice. So if you'll type in all capital letters, S-R-C-C, it's a discount code. C -C. Yes, ma'am, and you'll get two dollars off of your ticket. But that's, that's a, a very special that's offer a special just offer for you guys. And sort of almost a secret. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, how big is the cast? It's a bigger cast for. Well, I'll tell you this. Yeah. I do believe that um, Joel, who is also directing Singing in the Rain, ordered thirty-six rain ponchos. Wow. So. So there's somewhere in between yes. 30 and 36, probably. Mm -hmm. 
I know it's taken probably quite a while to get everything together, like the dance oh, and yes. and all that, because that's the big thing in this musical. Yes. When I saw it, I saw it as a movie. Mm -hmm. I have not seen it on stage as a musical, so I'm excited about that. I think I really enjoyed watching Joel trying to figure it out. Like I said, um, I don't feel like this was necessarily written for the stage. In fact, I think probably the only song that I felt like was made um, for a musical, I mean for, for live stage. audiences, was Lena's song, and it's right. really meant to be the played thing added. to an audience, mm -hmm. right? It's a comedic song, it's great, um, and I think everything else is really made to be filmed. So watching him go, <laughs> they want us to get this here now? Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. I can imagine that that's hard. Yes, right. so that's then tough. he's got um, Jeannie Edwards, who's our costume design and director, um, as well as uh, Cindy. Um, we have uh, a brand new, I say brand new, brand new to us. Yeah. Um, and she is actually Fran's daughter-in-law. And oh, okay. she has oh, been Cindy our Jolly. yes, ma'am. Okay, and yeah, she's been our musical director this go round, and she is so fabulous. they've all been working together yes. to try and make certain, um, along with Danelle and Joel, to make certain that <laughs> this stage production looks like a stage production yeah. and is as you know as good a quality as you would be looking I'm at. I'm sure on it's going to be screen. fabulous. I think that um, the I go to Manchester to see plays as much as I can. And I'm always impressed. I'm always impressed. Some great sets. Do you have a huge set for this? Yes and no. I mean, we have a huge cast, and we have some very heavy set pieces. Um, in fact, one that I won't give away, but I know okay. you are going to love. Okay. Yeah. Um, but it is not all made up of, uh, of very large moving set pieces. Um, as far as, you know, a huge, uh, when we did Les Mis, we had a big, you know, um, the, barricade. the barricade, barricade that had to be rolled on. Um, and to me, that's not what this is. It's a lot of little pieces that come together, that come which together. means you have to be even more on your ball. Yeah. Yes, so that you can get everybody working together. Yeah, I feel like the, the dancing and the singing is really what's shining. Like, I, um, Amanda and Landon and Jared just do some incredible dancing. Like, that's it wonderful. just steals the show. And I think it's easier to focus on that when there's nothing right. kind of detracting from that. I totally agree. When when did you start back doing plays after having your little sweet girl? Um, I the first one I did after her was last year. I guess it was last February when we did "You're a Good Man, Charlie Brown" at the Mac, and so this is my see, only my second one and after I'm her. I'm sorry, I missed that. I bet it was cute. It as was could fun. Be. It yeah. was fun. So. I love, um, we all love Charlie Brown, but we're all going to love Singing in the Rain, which is oh, yes. coming up the last weekend October in October. October 26th, 27th, 28th, November 2nd through 4th. You can come see Caitlin and I, as well as Landon Spangler and Jared Feeblecorn at the Manchester Arts Center. And it's going to be a fabulous event, so don't forget to write that number down or go online and get your tickets. We'll be back, Caitlin. Amanda, how good to see you. I love you both. We'll be back with, uh, I haven't bothered to look and see <laughs> what. Let me tell you about the toughest guy on earth. He does the work of two jobs, but only gets paid for one. He's tough enough to feed the man who gave him a lifetime of nourishment. <laughs> He has the crazy strength to lift the man that raised him up without even flinching. That's right. No employee of the month bonus check here. This guy, no, this warrior, will always be by his father's side, even if his dad will hardly remember. Good luck finding a gym to train for that. If this guy isn't the toughest guy on the planet, then I don't know who is. Caregiving is tougher than tough. Find the care guides you need at aarp.org slash caregiving. Is this the year you want to get fit? If so, check out just some of the things Tullahoma Parks and Rec has to offer. Kickboxing, aerobics, silver sneakers workouts, swim lessons, boot camp, water aerobics, basketball, Zumba, yoga, pickleball, lap swimming, treadmill, karate. Get fit Tullahoma and have some fun with Tullahoma Parks and Rec. 
When your family suffers the loss of a loved one, the caring and compassionate staff at Tullahoma Funeral Home and Coffee County Funeral Chapel are standing by to assist you in every way possible. We are proud to support local industry and offer only Batesville caskets. Many funeral homes don't own or operate a crematory. We utilize the only crematory in Coffee County. Your loved one never leaves Coffee County. We can accommodate any need and any budget. Consider our complete pre-need service to remove this burden from your family during their time of grief. Lock in today's low costs and protect from inflation. Tullahoma Funeral Home and Coffee County Funeral Chapel. Our family caring for your family. Talking history about this and that. It's conversations with John and Pat. With John and Pat. With John and Pat. Hello, everyone. I'm John Rickman, sometime known as Blinky. And this is Pat Welch, sometime known as Scratchy. And uh, we're here today with the segment, segment 91 yeah. of the conversation with John and Pat. And, today and we're working on those nervous habits, John. We've been called out by our wives. And we're, I'm going to stop scratching. I've got a death grip on these <laughs> arms here. And, and we may toothpick your eyeballs to I, I keep, tell you. keep you from blinking. We're going to uh, do a little song that Harry Carey used to sing at the seventh inning of the ball game. Harry Carey was, was it Cubs? Cubs. Cubs. Middle of the seventh, seventh inning stretch. Take me out to the ball game. Take me out to the park. Buy me some popcorn and Cracker Jacks. somewhere smiling on that, John. That was magnificent. You know, he's one of those that wore the great big glasses. Mm -hmm. Great big glasses. I bet he could see out everywhere. Good he could see the Detroit look like with those <laughs> things. <laughs> <laughs> oh, me. What you looking for? Well, we're looking for a uh, baseball right. team, a great baseball team of Tullahoma Wildcats. All right. John, I don't know if you've... I'm, you're living out on the fringes of the city, and you may not. I live in town now, yeah, Pat. Well, you're out on the outskirts, so, though, <laughs> and uh, you may not. The information may not got all the way to you, but the mayor set up a sports council, uh -huh. and the sports council is is promote all sports and tell them. Well, one of the first things they're going to do, or have done, is they're going to set up a uh, hall of fame, mm -hmm. and uh, I believe the first induction uh, is going to be 12 teams or individuals that will be inducted, I think, February the 9th. But one of those teams, of two teams in the 12 inductees, is the 1974 State Baseball Championship at THS, which I think it was the first state championship team in Tallahoma at the high school level after uh, Wallace Wade's uh, Pole state champion. Uh, there was a playoff, is what you're saying. Correct. There wasn't. It was, but, a, but it was voted, and it was. Uh, they prep were prep school, player. and some of them, mm -hmm. I believe, some of them were were post high school, and uh, like, like uh, oh, uh, Tennessee Military Academy and Sweetwater used to be, where they somebody they need to brush up on his grades would take a postgraduate year. I think there were some of those at Fitzgerald <laughs> Clark, but it wasn't a public, wasn't a public school. No, absolutely school. not. But it, so it's the first public school state championship that was won in Tallahoma. It was uh, coached by Coach Mathis, Jerry Mathis, who was a legendary coach in Tallahoma. The, this was in 1974, the previous year in 73. He'd uh, been a runner up. And then later on, he had another runner up and another state championship team, I think. That was about the time your son was playing, That's when too, Chris right? and yeah. several others played. Uh, Coach Revis's boy, Craig, there were several good players mm -hmm. in there. But they had the 74 team, had a lot of experience, and it, but it, he also played some sophomores that were vital uh, uh, contributors to that team. Uh, let's talk about some of the players uh, now, Philip, if you'll put that up. And Quit scratching, pal. I've, I've scra but I've got off my thighs. I'm down to my shins now. <laughs> 
Let's, um, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> let's see here, John. Uh, Bill Brantner, who I believe is living in Moore County now, played yeah. third. Mike Howell, who had moved into town a couple years previous, was a really good athlete, good uh, football player, real good punt returner. He played shortstop. Ronnie James was on second. Greg Hempkin, when uh, I believe when J.R. or Jerry Farrell wasn't pitching, was on first. Jim Parrish was a catcher. Ricky Pless uh, was a center fielder. And uh, Tim Finch, I believe, was in right field with Joey Tuck in, in uh, left field. And there were several other contributors in there. I think Jeff Pruitt played a lot. Uh, Dale Mosley was a, pitched uh, a lot. But now from that picture, let's see if we can't get this right. The, on the far left, and we're going to go from left to right, the first is Coach Mathis. Then was Mike Stamps. Uh, Brad Welch uh, was a manager on that team. He's behind him. And then keep going, uh, Mike Haynes. Uh, Greg Searcy, Mike Howell, Ronnie James, Bill Brantner, Jeff Pruitt, John Jarrett, Ricky Pless, Dale Mosley, J.R. or Jerry Farah, Tim Finch, Joey Tuck, and that's Mr. McClure that's presenting the trophy. He was the uh, principal at the high school at the time, and he was also on, he was chairman of the board of control of TWSAA. He's an important part in the, the, the TWSAA. J then it's Jimmy Parrish. Uh, Bobby Riddell, Greg Hempkin, Butch Duke was another manager, I believe, and then Ted Frisbee on the right was assistant coach and a longtime um, physics teacher at the high school and eventually, I believe, was on the school board in, in uh, Coffee mm -hmm. County. Yep. Uh, that state tournament was played in Tullahoma, and uh, I believe there were four other teams involved. I'm not, I need to. I should have boned up a little bit more, but I, they played in pools, and then the winners of the pools played each other, and I believe it was it was the best out of three, so you had to win two games, a lot of games, a lot of a lot of pitchers, and a lot of tired pitchers when it was over with, because uh, J.R. Uh, Fair was voted uh, by either the Tennessean or the Banner as the the most valuable player in Middle Tennessee, including Nashville, which. Uh, you know, the, the national papers pretty well ignore lower middle Tennessee now, but he was, and we had several people on the all mid-state and uh, first, second, and third, the bottom mentioned that, that type of thing at the time. But J.R. was a great pitcher, and he pitched at least two full games in five days, I believe it was. And then he f finished up a little bit of the championship game. He pitched in the semis, which was his second game in five days, and they played Cookville, those last two games, beat back to back. And the first game, JR struck out 12, walked none, and only had gave up four hits. And that they scored, or we scored rather, I believe on air. I don't think it was an earned run. I may be wrong about that. I'm going to start scratching. Let me hold on to this. <laughs> <laughs> but at the end of the game, the last out that Cookville had, they had a guy on third, and obviously the manager or coach thought that uh, the man up at bat, there was two outs. He was a he, batter. He, he, well, he may have been a good batter, but he realized <laughs> that J.R. was going to strike him out. So he had the runner on third, which was Stanley Shanks, and that's a big name in, in the Cookville, the Shanks, uh, their father, I believe, was, in, uh, was a school administrator, and his older brother uh, was a real good uh, player at Cookville and was a great player at Motlow for Coach Revis. Well, anyway, Stanley's on third base, and the man, the uh, coach doesn't feel like it. Uh, batter had much of a chance against uh, Mr. Farah, and he, they tried to steal home. And uh, uh, Jimmy Parrish, we said, was a catcher. He blocked the plate. And the last <laughs> out was at the plate, and I imagine mayhem broke out. <laughs> and, and But Tullahoma had to win another game, and, and uh, JR is about out of gas. And I think in the championship game, both teams, of course, out of uh, pretty low on pitchers. Joey Tuck started that uh, game, and then um, he was relieved by Dale Mosley. And we had about a two or three run lead, and uh, Dale started getting hit a little bit as he got tired, and uh, Coach Mathis, Decided he was going to 
if he's going to get beat, he's going to get beat with, us. Beat with the best. <laughs> with the best he could, if there was anything left to the best, anyway. So he, and Coach told me this a couple of months ago, that he went to the mound and, and asked Jerry how he felt. He said he th thought he'd be all right, let me, let me warm up. He said he threw about four absolute flamethrowers. And then uh, he kind of looked at Coach, and Coach was still asking for more, and, and uh, he said, Coach, the best thing you can do, just go sit in that dugout. I've got, I can take care of this. And he, and he took care of the next three batters, struck them all out, and, and uh, tell the home won the first state championship that they'd won. Pat, we, we have mentioned J.R. quite a bit, but what did he tell you? And he told me the same thing. He's, he had an aunt that saved... Uh, or maybe his mother saved oh, these yeah. clippings. Yeah, they told my wife when he brought her the scrap. And he said, "I want you to know that this team was not about me. It was about us together as a baseball team." Yeah, had a and that's the humility that Jr. Yeah. showed. Yeah. And those other players, yeah. dynamite players, they I, were all really good hitters. They thing, hit all the way down the batting order. Pless was a great hitter. Yeah, Hal was a great hitter. Finch uh, had two ba uh, runs batted in, and, and one of those. Uh, later games according to the newspaper it, they had a hitting lineup now one thing i remember is uh, uh there were franklin county was in our district and by george they we had as good. much we had as hard a time in the district term That's as we right. did in the in the state and tellahoma tournament. at the district level against franklin county started i remember listening it on radio pat that's too too uh, spoiled to go out that night i guess and they Did you say spoiled or cheap <laughs> <laughs> and they hit that ball hit that ball telahoma hit that ball hit that ball and they ran up a big lead on frank and from that point on it seemed like through the rest of the time till the till the finals of the state uh, tournament had a, they had a great we're gonna have to end up pat yeah. but with this being well, good me, talking me, about that team. let's dig on coach revis a little bit just a second because <laughs> The uh, the last <laughs> night, the paid attendance at the finals was fourteen hundred and thirty two paid, which was a state record. Well, the Coach Mathis loves to uh, know that his team would make money. Oh yeah, that. yeah, he's he's not, he's not opposed to making money. The uh, that broke the record out since seventy four. The previous record was also set in Tullahoma, mm -hmm. and it was Coach Revis's. Franklin County team that won the yeah. state championship. Mm. They was and there, but there wasn't but about 40 fewer. And I don't know if if uh, if uh, Mr. McClure and Coach Mathis <laughs> snug in an extra couple people there to make sure they set the record or not. But it was a, a great game and a great a great event for Coach Mathis. Did a good job with those he boys. He certainly did, and, and uh, he was patient in lots of ways. And so we we enjoyed that, Pat. No, the one thing we did you, a good job. May, and maybe if. If this goes well enough, maybe management will, we're, we're, we're setting kind of, our sights are on segment 100. Maybe they'll bring us back and we'll have a little segment on every inductee of the Sports Hall of Fame. That, wouldn't that be great? That, wouldn't that be wonderful? That'd be yeah. good, Pat. Yeah. All right, John, that wraps up segment 91, and it was a fine segment. But it's not the end of the segments, we hope. If management will allow us to come back, we're coming. We've got more stories. Thank you all. Talking history about this and that. <laughs> it's conversations it with John and Pat. With John and Pat. With John and Pat. Partners for Healing provides medical care to the working uninsured of Coffee, Franklin, and Moore counties. We are in Tullahoma from 8 to 5, Monday through Thursdays, and in Manchester on Fridays from 8 to 12. We provide primary medical care and offer an in-house disease management program. My name is Rosie Mitchell, and I would just like to say I am blessed to have partners in my life. Please call 455-5014 for more information. Thank you for being one of our Partners for Healing. Rush Bricken understands the importance of education. Rush Bricken knows agriculture and farming is vital to Tennessee. Rush Bricken believes in a good education and creating job skills. On November 6th, you have a choice for your Tennessee state representative. I'll represent your conservative values in Nashville. 40 years in business. I'm picking Bricken. 20 years on the county commission. We're, We're picking, picking Bricken. Bricken. Vote Rush Bricken November 6th to the Tennessee State House of Representatives.
Is this the year you want to get fit? If so, check out just some of the things Tullahoma Parks and Rec has to offer. Kickboxing, aerobics, silver sneakers workouts, swim lessons, boot camp, water aerobics, basketball, Zumba, yoga, pickleball, lap swimming, treadmill, karate. Get fit Tullahoma and have some fun with Tullahoma Parks and Rec. folks we're back and I tell you what I'm excited my buddy uh, schoolmate classmate uh, Tullahoma High School 1967 graduate Steve Graham is up here with me and uh, I had forgotten I ran into Steve recently and I had forgotten the art side of his life I've always remembered the business side of his life and, and done a lot of things in business from uh, killing pests to you killing. name it. That's right. That's and right. Uh, pest control business years ago. But Furniture. I had forgotten how incredible an artist this fella is. And he was telling me about some of his carvings and I asked if he could bring them on the show. And I said, well, of course. Welcome, sir. Glad, Glad to have you here. here. <laughs> <laughs> Where would you like for well, me to start? Hey, you just, yeah, folks, you can see a little bit behind me and a little bit. Look, I'll just hold this up I'll right see. here. And you can see the relief in that. You can tell that that is, uh, Ooh, that like is, that. you can tell that that is not one plane. It's, it's, it's cut out and he's going to show how he does that and then paints these things because what he has done up here is just phenomenal. This is the one that I'm working on now. Okay, let's see if I can get it up here. There, there you, you go. go. Uh, I'm in the process of cutting the background out. Uh, I've still, still got to do the uh, real intricate work on it. And once I am finished with that, I will go in and paint it with acrylic paint. So that starts out as a that. That starts out as a flat board, so you're taking you're taking stuff out, sort of like a sculptor does I when am. they take a block of stone and and it's poplar wood. And you're taking it, and, and that's your favorite wood to use yes. as poplar. I started out, uh, had two trees fall over on the farm, got 972 board foot black walnut, and that's oh, what I started wow. with. And uh, that doesn't gouge too easy, does it? Well. I learned a lot. Can you pick that side up, John? Pull that up here. There you go. This is the black walnut, and, and this is of bears. Uh, there you go. Uh, black bears. This is the oldest carving that I've done that I brought with me. When you varnish this stuff, it turns darker. And I had it around for years and years and years. I eventually went in and burnt the bears with a torch because I'm always experimenting on, on, on what to do next on these things. Uh, and well, then I hung like it up I, and it was darker, uh -huh. even still, of course. So well, the bears need years, to be darker. You can't see them. A couple of years later, I came in and painted the leaves, which, which gave us a little more contrast thing up, yeah. going on on it. There you go. Uh, and tools used, John. Where is that uh, mallet? Here it is. It rolled. rolled I up. use a mallet. Okay. And tell them what that says on the end of that mallet. I think that's great. I don't know. You tell me. You got your glasses on. Wood is good. Comp. That's the wood is good company makes this right here. Don't hit yourself with that. And that's that's guys rubber wrapped around it, or, or yeah. real hard rubber. And these are the tools. These are the gouges. If you can zoom in on those, uh, I don't know if you can. There yeah. you go. And they have different swoops. Uh, some are V tools. Um, I guess I have probably around 80 different tools that I use. And some of these tools I make myself. Well, I would think you would have to. Yeah. You know. Here's your bag yeah, over here. There you go. Good. And of course, you've seen that. This is a carving. Help me again, John. All right. You have uh, you have it Bonnaroo over here, and this is Ray Cobb, John. 
right here. Yeah, Ray's okay. going to be on the show here maybe he? next week or sometime, isn't he, Peggy? Yes. What a patriot he is. What a patriot. Uh, this is one of the worst brothers. Yeah. Twins. Okay, you yeah. remember? Yeah, remember. Um, on over here, Majors. Robin. Robin, exactly. In Isn't this. that great? This was a friend of mine just died, Mavis uh, Davis, and then her daughter just had died before her that in this, and this music in the park, like it said, I can't see right down here. Uh, it's backwards. It is backwards, isn't it? You, who's that, you, who's that you, in the Have hat? you not seen this man? No. no. You know, you ha you've got, oh, if you've been in Tullahoma, yeah, you've yeah, had yeah, to have seen Bobby. him. Yes, right. Bobby, who's, who's the one right next to Bobby in the hat? Uh, that's me. That's you, that's what I thought. <laughs> it's me, and uh, actually, this is me from a picture from the in from the back side dancing. Better. You always oh, look better from the back. I do, I do, I really do. Uh, dancing with a senorita in New Mexico. All right. I photographed all these things through the years. And I do a lot of photographic work and I keep these things. So I take all these photographs and I put put something together. Now who's on this side over here? That's Ray Cobb. Oh, I mean, you oh, mean yeah, over here. Backwards. This is a group that was at the 41A one of the 41A festivals. Okay? Yeah. Okay. Super. I got it. Yeah, you break them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't want to say too much about that, do we? And I the, love the last, last large one that I brought. Ah, there's one behind me. Well, not as large. Not as large. Look at that, folks. I, uh, last year I went now, down. Wait a minute. Let me, let me let my end down. There you go. We gotta make her level. Okay, there you, you go. got right. it. You got it right there. Okay, last year That's I went the old to old carpenter in me doing that. That is what it yeah. is. Uh, to the Jack Daniels World Barbecue, uh -huh. which is getting ready to take a place right next, soon, next couple of couple weeks. Couple weeks yeah, again, yeah. and I photographed all these people down there, and that man just coming up. Where is he? Yep. Phil Wingo, right there. Whoops, here he is, right here, from Chicago. He is one this uh, barbecue in years past. He, he has purchased this, this piece here. He's with his friend, uh, Ron Alt. Other people from Texas, the swamp yeah, people. that's great. Uh, just that's all great. All kinds of stuff. And then let's get a quick shot over here before we run out of time. Okay. You have a, my foxes. Isn't that Hold great? That. Let me have this one. Let me hold got, this one up. You got bang. My, uh, you got the banger. No, we covered that up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then there's uh, this one here. Uh, this one here, there, I photographed carvings, wood carvings, hanging on the wall inside a church in um, New Mexico. And there's three different pictures I had taken and put all this together right. for this particular Excellent. carving. Okay. Excellent. Uh, about out of time there, John. Well, what we'll do is bring this. We've got to bring it up. This is one of my favorites. I love red tail hawks. And uh, there you go. It's a lot, a lot of intricate carving going on in these. Well, in the uh, painting of it's incredible. Thank you. Ed Beavers bought one of these. Did he? And it has it hanging in his house. Uh, Ed's, a but, uh, Ed's a buddy. I, I sure yeah. do like Ed and Christy a whole lot. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah, do y'all go to the same church together, Yeah, don't yeah we did. Okay. You used to hang out there every well, now and then. I was baptized there. And, yeah. But what I want, what I want people, we got, we're out of time, but we're not out of time, because I'll say when we're out of time. Oh. Uh, <laughs> well, I want people to, oh, there you go. Go ahead. I want people to understand how to get in touch with you. Uh, to where if they want to commission you to do something or if they'd like to come to your home and look at this stuff or however you want to show it to them. Because this is incredible, <clears throat> folks. And, and you, what we've shown you is nothing compared to being right here and touching this and looking at it close. Well, that's what I was going to say. I mainly show all my carvings are on Facebook. Uh, and that would be? That would be uh, Stephen Graham. Stephen Graham. And you find me on Facebook. Uh, but you're very right. What you see in photographs doesn't touch it. You don't you you don't know what's here, folks, until you 
Put your hands well, on that's it. That's just like when you pick you that know? up. Now look at look the way the look the way that thing shines when on the high points and the low points there, and particularly right over here. See, you can see that that's you can see that they're different different planes. Yeah. And that's right. what's that's what's so that's what's so incredible about get it. You, get uh, yeah, it's wonderful. Fingers wonderful right down in there. Yeah. As are you. But, well, thank so, you very much. Stephen Graham uh, on Facebook, friend him, check all of this stuff out. Uh, or you can email me, S-G-W-C-A-R-V-E -E at Comcast.net. Comcast.net. Yes. Thank you, buddy. Thank you. You don't know how much I appreciate, I appreciate this. It. Thank you. And we're, what we're going to do is we're gonna, we'll give you, I'll get Philip to give you a private link to this segment we're, do, we're doing right here. Awesome. You can post that awesome. on your Facebook awesome. page as Thank well. Thank you so much. And email it to whoever you want to email it Just to. Just send it to all your buddies. Hey, the Class 67 <laughs> got to stay together. <laughs> yeah, because we're dwindling. We're dwindling. We're, <laughs> we're shrinking. Shrinking. <laughs> Folks, we'll be right back after these messages. Thank you. It's time for every family and business in Tullahoma to go green and recycle. Tullahoma Public Works makes it simple and easy to recycle. Just place your recyclable materials, paper, plastic, aluminum, and cardboard beside your garbage container on the same day your garbage is picked up. Your recycled materials don't have to be in a fancy container. Recycling is not only the right thing to do, it makes sense. Recycling pays. Paying to bury our garbage costs each of us. Please do your part. Let's go green, Tullahoma, and recycle. Hi, I'm Cindy. And I'm Jacob. I'm the rooster. And I'm the red mate. And we would like to welcome you to Roosterware. Yes, Roosterware is a cottage industry producing accessories for men, women, children, babies, and pets. All items are hand cut and sewn locally. Roosterware specializes in bow ties, pocket squares, scarves, cufflinks, neckties, and aprons of all sizes for all ages. Baby products include onesies, diaper covers, bibs, and burp pads. All bow ties, tie it yourself, or pre tied come with an adjustable neckband. All products can be made with the material of your choice as special orders are available upon request. Don't be standing back looking at fashion. Create your own with Rooster Wear. Come visit us at roosterandredmaiden.com to find our handcrafted designs for the cock of the walk. <laughs> to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. I need to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. Why can't I eat, eat, eat apples and bananas? Support the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks to help provide meals to those in need. Join us at feedingamerica.org. Get your news first, fast, and free with your news leader on 6 every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday nights at 6, 8, and 10 p.m. Local weather, sports, community calendar events, and a comprehensive look at the latest news stories and newsmakers as only a video news broadcast can do. Get it first, fast, and free with news leader on Channel 6, your local information network. Welcome back. We finally got Sean Amadon from the Hands-On Science Center back here to talk about the big gala that's coming up. Are we calling it a gala? Sure, that sounds right. good. Yeah. Uh, sounds like it should be a gala. Yeah, sounds fancy that it's way. It's going to be at the yep. center, right? Yep, it will be at the, uh, at the Science Center. Uh, it is our annual uh, fundraising event. It's the Science of Wine and Brew. And actually this year we added an extra letter. It's going to be the Science of Wine and Brew and Spirits. Wow. So should uh, be an interesting time. And all that stuff will be there, right? Yeah, if we're going to have uh, tastings. Uh, we have uh, breweries, uh, distilleries, and uh, vineyards coming out to have some samples for people to uh, taste. Have you had good uh, pe people to donate a lot of stuff yeah, yeah, for we the have, tasting? We definitely do. Uh, we have Old Shed uh, Brewery right here in town is going to be there, as well as you know several others uh, you know throughout the state. Yeah. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Well, let's tell them the date. Mm -hmm. It's going to be uh, November 10th uh, from 6.30 to 9.30. 
Um, and you get tickets by calling Hands on Science Center? Yep, uh, we have them available online. If you go to our website, uh, it's uh, hosc.org. And if you click on the gift shop link, you can actually uh, get tickets right on there. There you go, write that down and get a ticket. $45 is a good deal and it's a great cause. It is, yeah. It's, this event we really kind of depend on throughout yeah. the year. It is our you know, major it's fundraising. major fundraiser. Yeah. And, uh, everybody knows that you cannot have something this wonderful in our community and actually there's something there for all ages there is i mean I we have children come but yeah, it's really i've been there yeah we have um, families that come you know with two-year-olds that you know actually come a couple times a week and just let their kids yeah, run around and, and play and, they start to grow up yeah, there. and then we yeah exactly um then we have adults that come you know adults sure. come by themselves or while their kid is playing you know one of the adults is you know building something with the blocks yeah. and stuff so I, it's and, all and kinds of fun you get a family membership yep. am i right yep, on we this? do have uh, memberships now um which actually is not only good for the science center but it's good for over 300 science centers throughout the entire country. Which is pretty amazing. Yeah, it's a great travel, deal. I know the Huntsville one's on the Yeah, the, the Space and Rocket Space Center, and you Rocket can get center. in for free there by getting our membership. That's and, a fabulous yeah. deal. To, well, yeah. How much is a membership now? It's uh, 79. Uh, if you have a family of four, it's 79. Um, slightly higher for larger and families. And the beauty of that, you can go anytime. Yeah, exactly. You can just go anytime. Yeah, and if you do any kind of traveling, like I said, over 300 places throughout the country will actually accept that membership. So it's an amazing deal. And I know you do birthday parties there or we other do. kind of parties yep. probably and I suppose they're mostly children's parties or mostly, mostly. Uh, we, we have had some adult parties come in yeah. as well and you know so all kinds of well, you know, really cool stuff uh, what's your favorite animal there um my favorite animal has always been snakes you know so yeah. uh, we do have a ball python that we bring out for uh, kids to pet and things like that and some of the parties so that's I, always a good one the python you haven't personally brought the python but at mm. one time I think somebody did bring yeah, very python possible, and yeah. if I'm not mistaken it kept wanting to like square off in the edge of the oh, room okay. is that what they do they're just exploring you yeah know, they kind of just you know move around wherever and, you know, and you're in no way thing. afraid of I'm a not python. you know you gotta you know, respect the, animals and know how to work with them did but they squeeze you to death <laughs> <laughs> well the one we have is you know yeah, about, about yay big so <laughs> no no nothing to really worry about how big do they get? Um, well, it depends on the species. There's all different types of pythons. Yeah. Uh, the one we have is a ball python, and they actually don't get much bigger much than bigger, that. Yeah. So. Well, the, you know, it's it's always been hard for me to think a <laughs> snake was sweet, but honestly, they can be. They can it's be. Like yeah. Almost any animal, and if you absolutely. probably have him wrap around your neck or whatever, yeah. and. <laughs> Love him. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you have a name for it? Uh, that one's name is. Oh, it has a name, and I just oh, slipped my okay. head. <laughs> slipped my head. I, I know my uh, all my interns and volunteers. You know, they're all yeah. There, so. I, I knew a man in the Philippine Islands, and my husband and I would go to his house for events. And the first time I was there, I, I looked up on the rafters, and there's several pythons just kind of hanging out. Mm -hmm. You know, they looked perfectly yeah. harmless. Yeah. I'm assuming he fed them before we came. But anyway. <laughs> yeah. So I know he loved his pythons. Mm -hmm, sure. Well, let's talk a little bit about the event now. Yes. At 6 to 9, have I got that six, in my head? 6.30 to 9.30. 6.30 to 9.30. Mm -hmm. And uh, your tickets really would be easier if you had if you bought them ahead of time. Yeah, it would be easier. Uh, we do have a uh, special you sale a price. Special. If you buy them um, before November 3rd, they're at 45. Um, be f they will be 50 at the door. And we actually do have a uh, special for members going on right now as well. So if you are a member or you decide to get that membership that we yeah. talked about, you can actually get them for another $5 off in advance. Fabulous. So just $40. That's, that's really um, good. And they are up for sale right now on our website. And uh, the more memberships you have, really, the better the Science Center becomes Absolutely. because it takes money to bring in yeah. new things. Yeah. What are the latest things you've brought into the center? Um, the we latest? are. We're you know, working on updating some of the other exhibits right now. Um, one thing that we have been working on long term, it had been started before you know, I even got there, was our sound garden. It's basically um, an outdoor exhibit that has like outdoor musical instruments. Uh, and finally it's being you know, progressed. Uh, should, construction should start on that next week. Um, so that's so definitely what, a big one. Let's give the hours. Yeah. Of, uh, every day and what, mm -hmm. when sure. you can get in the science center. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we are we are closed on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Okay. Uh, every day we're open from 10 to 5, except for Sundays, which is 1 to 5. Yeah. 
So any day of the week almost, except Monday. Except Tuesday and Wednesday. Um, Tuesday and Wednesday, yeah. I'm sorry. Tuesday and Wednesday closed. Open for events and field trips and stuff that day. Yeah. So we're generally there anyway, but for special well, events. you know, I've never thought about this, but I know it takes a lot of money to feed all the different animals sure. that you take care of. Do you ever request that people turn in maybe goods? Um, yeah, we could use uh, donations as far as that goes. Um, you know, if people have gardens with you know fresh fruits and vegetables, it's definitely something a lot of the animals eat. Um, yeah. So that's something so that we do to, accept donations. If you, can't, if you can't afford to support this event, then support in other ways. That's Absolutely. What I'm to yeah. say. And we're but always looking for volunteers and interns the, as well. One of the finest so. things that we have here in our community. Oh, I'd, I'd like to think so. You know, you know that's, I'm, that's I'm why a big I decided to come. Proponent it's, of the arts mm -hmm. and. Uh, also, the Science Center and the fact that we have an art center, a performing art center and a science center, I think that's mm -hmm. fabulous. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, that's one of the reasons I decided to move here and take this position. Yeah. Well, is we're glad you came. Yeah, I, I'm <laughs> very glad to be here. You know how many members you have now? Um, it is around 600, I believe. Um, That's pretty so good, yeah. But pretty decent. But Always looking for yeah. more. Well, definitely you, looking for do you, more. Yeah. Do you all ever look for volunteers? Yeah, yes. We uh, really count in on what, volunteers in a lot. what capacity would it volunteer? Well, lots of different types. Um, I mean, we have a lot of community service volunteers, the, the volunteer through the Tennessee, um, Tennessee Promise program. Yeah. Um, so some younger volunteers there. But we need, you know, people that know IT. We need people that are, you know, great teachers and can work with the kids. Um, I actually have been developing an, in, an internship program now. Okay. So I've been working with some of the high school students and college students in the area. So students that might so, desire to go on with this sort of occupation, they can come in and get find out if they really like it. Exactly. You know? Yeah, it's a find you know great really opportunity like not only for the center to get some extra help, but sure. you know we're we're trying to give back to the community also and teach them about that kind of stuff. Well, Sean, I am really so proud of our Hands On Science Center, and don't forget to write down this information. Uh, .org, is it just hand? Uh, H-O-S-C H -H yeah, dot org. Yeah, just And if you go to our gift shop. Yeah. And, uh, mm -hmm. The gift shop on there, and there's a link uh, on that website that has the tickets for sale. All right. Mm -hmm. Thank Welcome, you so much. and thank you so much for coming. <laughs> we'll be you. back. Smoking tobacco accounts for three of every ten fire deaths in the United States. to a structure fire, 202 Main Street, heavy smoke showing. Neighbors advise child trapped inside. Lighters, matches, and associated smoking paraphernalia are the leading cause of preschooler fire deaths. We as firefighters know that most structure fires can be prevented. I've got one, I've got one. Please help us to give you a fighting chance. This can be prevented. Contact the Tullahoma Fire Department for a free home safety inspection. What's a Tennessee vacation? It starts off like any road trip, and then boom. Adventure and thrills everywhere you look, which happens to be some of the most beautiful scenery in the country. Music here, history there, and all kinds of green in between. Come relax and unwind, or bring the crowd for some stargazing, or stargazing. Whatever you do, come hungry and expect an awesome soundtrack. It's all right here in Tennessee. We're playing your song. For a free vacation guide, visit tnvacation.com. Get your news first, fast, and free with your news leader on 6 every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday nights at 6, 8, and 10 p.m. Local weather, sports, community calendar events, and a comprehensive look at the latest news stories and newsmakers as only a video news broadcast can do. Get it first, fast, and free with news leader on Channel 6, your local information network. featuring Chance Clatton today at the 41A Music Festival, which was quite successful. We have a video of him.
you heard the news, Russell Barnett Automotive Family has launched its new website, russellbarnett.com. Very user friendly. Over 1,000 new and pre-owned vehicles to choose from. Online credit applications. Hometown auto rental. Customer testimonials. Trade appraisals. Certified collision center. Service department scheduling. Too many reasons to mention why I keep asking the question, why buy anywhere else? My wife Jackie has always been the life of the party, but things changed when she couldn't be as active anymore. They told me I needed a double knee replacement. It's not as big a deal as it used to be, but she still needed to go to rehab. I was amazed at how good the therapists were at Life Care. They took really good care of me. They took excellent care of her, and now she's back doing the things she loves, and that makes everyone happy. Life Care Center of Tullahoma wants you to get active and live well. So you've been meaning to do something healthy, commune with nature, get outdoors and meet new people. We have the perfect solution. Come hike with us. You can find a Tennessee Trails Association chapter near you, including Clarksville, Columbia Franklin, Highland Rim, Jackson, Knoxville, Oak Ridge, Memphis, Murfreesboro, Nashville, Plateau at Crossville, and Upper Cumberland. We're on the web at TennesseeTrails.org. It's fun, it's stress-free, and it's good for you. See you on the trails. All right, I'm back and I'm happy to have my lovely bride with me here today and we're going to talk about an event that she's getting ready to have for Alzheimer's Tennessee and da 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 free <laughs> yeah, here's Franny. Thank you Johnny. <laughs> it is good to be with you all this morning. I am Fran Gray and I am honored to work with Alzheimer's Tennessee. We are a local group for our fellow Tennesseans here, and we are getting ready to have an Alzheimer's 101 training class. It's coming up November 6th. The idea is that we all need to know more about dementia and dementia care. Oh, perfect. There, there's a great image. Uh, the event will be at First Christian Church on the corner of Jackson and Grundy Street. November 6th, we'll gather a little before 10 and kick it off about 10 and be finished by 145. One of the, the nice features of the day is that if you have a loved one who needs to have care, you can uh, make a reservation with us by October 30th and we can uh, reserve a special place for them at Morning Point that day for free. They'll have lunch and some activities and we would love to have you come and, and your loved one will be in good care with a good lunch and you can have some time to ask questions and learn a lot of things about Alzheimer's care and support right here in our community. Our speakers for the day include Jim Conley, our own city judge and friend. He will be speaking about some of the legalities of care and we will have Dr. Ben Gardner of Columbia, who is a longtime internist, hospice and palliative care expert, and a caregiver himself for those with dementia. So he'll be speaking from a medical standpoint on caring for those with dementia. And then we will have Kate Kelly, who is the program manager for the Center for Cognitive Medicine at Vanderbilt University Medical Center. She is involved with a lot of wonderful new research projects and one of the biggest things we do in Alzheimer's Tennessee is promote research. We are looking for a cure or prevention for Alzheimer's disease. And so Kate will be here to tell us about what's going on in the research field and how you could be part of it. Also, we're going to have a wonderful talk with 
the Reverend Howard Olive. Mr. Olive is a retired Baptist minister. He's the father of our coach, John Olive, and he and Mrs. Olive spent her last years at their home as he was caring for her as she had dementia. And um, he will share their story of faith and love during our lunch on the 6th. Uh, we also have Cheryl Blanchard. Cheryl works with us in Alzheimer's, Tennessee as a social worker and she's going to be talking about how to communicate and care for your loved one who has dementia. She will be sharing a lot of practical tips. Uh, she'll be talking about how we can interpret behaviors and meet those behaviors in a positive way. So we want all of you to come out. Uh, reservations can be made by calling us, and you see the number there, 434-2348. You can go online and register. Uh, the, the fee of $15 will cover lunch and some refreshments and all the materials of the day. So we encourage you to come. Again, that's at First Christian Church on November 6th. That is Election Day, so be sure and remember to vote and then come and share some time with us. We want to uh, provide right here in Tullahoma and in our surrounding counties a lot of education and support for all of us who are, are taking care of loved ones. So that sets us apart in that we are right here. We have a support group that meets every month in our office on the third Monday of the month at noon. And during that time, your loved one can go to Morning Point for free for lunch. So uh, we, again, are offering services here, tips, uh, information on resources, and we would love to have any and all of you who are involved in caregiving, or if you know someone who is caregiving and you want to support them through this journey, please tell them about our Alzheimer's 101 on November 6th. How about that, John? I think you just did an outstanding job. Thank you. Thank Very you for well allowing done. us to Very come. Very well done. And, our, and our organization uh, was originally part of the Alzheimer's Association, and over seven years ago, a group disaffiliated because they wanted to keep all the monies in Tennessee, all the monies that were raised, and they felt that they knew best how to reinvest those monies into programming and support for families in Tennessee. So that that is how. Alzheimer's Tennessee came to be. All of our offices are in Tennessee, and as I say, all the money's raised stay in Tennessee and get reinvested in the communities where we're serving. So I'm, I'm traveling among uh, all the counties of southern middle Tennessee. But the thing about it is there's someone, you're a warm body, you're a voice, uh, uh, two things I've learned by speaking with a very bright young lady uh, a friend of mine, Rebecca French, is the two very important things you need to accomplish what you want to accomplish is first to have a vision and second to have a voice. And Alzheimer's Tennessee has a vision. Our vision is to make Alzheimer's a memory. That's right. And, and to care for the people of Tennessee. So your investment dollars stay here and the voice is sitting right here next to me and I've loved hearing that voice. <laughs> for uh, 40 years plus. And uh, with that said, thank you very much for being here. Thank and you. And go to Alzheimer's 101 at First Christian Church and find out what this disease is all about. Find out how, how you can find the help you need if you're involved with that with your loved one. And just know that there's somebody local who cares and will help you on that journey. It's for anyone who has uh, a loved one with Alzheimer's or any related dementia. There you go. Because there's several. Several of them. Yes. Thanks, honey. Thank see you. you. See you at home. Okay. All right. We'll be right back, folks. Oh, hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is the paint. Uh-oh. I just knocked out a tree over. This is the paint doctor. I got the color wheel. Now, you know what a color wheel is? It is the wheel at the paint works where you pick all your colors to paint your room. It could be a multicolored beard. It could be a underarm fan. 
you never can tell. One thing we do know is that it's time to paint. You know, you can make your wife very happy if you go to your house and paint some rooms or you paint you paint the outside of the house, the inside of the house. It makes them very, feel very good because you work hard for them and they like that. All women like to see their man sweat, you know? They do, they do. Honeydew is what they do. And you get to do it too. So you go to the paint works at 1960 North Washington Street and you see David David Eichenen over there, and he's the real paint doctor. He fix you up with color. It's so nice when the color is right. Go to Paintworks today, Martin Senor. See, Martin Senor, right there. Martin Senor at, at the Paintworks. Bye, and we see you next time. Ha, oh, I'm burning up. You know what, guys? There's a lot of tree branches and dry brush over here. We should probably move the bonfire over there. I'm guessing Smokey liked that idea. Okay, so what would you bring to my company? What do you need? I need problem-solving skills. I got through high school without a car, a phone, or a computer. No college degree, though. Not yet, but life's taught me a lot, and I'm ready for more. Well, you're not the typical kind of candidate that I hire. But you are exactly what I'm looking for. Your company could be missing out on the candidates it needs most. Learn how to find a great pool of untapped talent at gradsoflife.org. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm back, and I'm here with my buddy, Alan Harris, and he is the commander of the American Legion Post 43 here in Tullahoma, and we want to talk a little bit about Veterans yeah, Day. Yeah, thanks, John, for having me uh, uh, on such short notice. Veterans Day falls on a Sunday this year, and uh, this is a very important Veterans Day because it uh, represents the 100th anniversary of the signing of the Armistice in 1918. And so uh, American Legion Post 43 figures it is, a, it is the right time to have Veterans Day celebration on, on actual Veterans, Veterans, Veterans Day. Day. That's right, that's right. So we're hosting an event for all the uh, local veterans and their families. Sunday, we're going to start gathering about noonish because everybody is just uh, getting out of the church at right, that time. Right. And as soon as we get enough of a crowd uh, to be there, we're going to have a brief ceremony, not, not a lot of long speeches, but we want to have people gather there to have a good time, right. celebrate each other, and uh, have an observance of Veterans Day. So come out on uh, November 11th to the American Legion Post 43, which is located just down the street from the veranda, just up the street from uh, couches. the uh, couches. Daddy Billy's yeah, Daddy and Billy's. the avenues. Yeah, so, so thanks. On, on Atlantic Street downtown. Thanks for that. And, the 11th. Uh, look forward to seeing you. Yes, sir. Thanks Thank for you. being here, buddy. Thank you, sir. Appreciate your service. Yeah. Folks, that's it for today. We'll be back <laughs> next time. Don't you dare not come and watch us. Tell your friends about it. We have fun around here. See you then.